Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about converting cylinder heads to unleaded. So when we convert a set of cylinder heads to unleaded, what are we doing and why are we doing it? Well, one of the reasons that we're doing it is back in the day there was leaded fuel. Lead actually helped absorb some of the shock of the valve hitting the seat. So it actually had lead in there, lead is soft, and it actually protected the parts. We started removing lead from our fuel, so we started to remove some of the protection that is in our fuel, which is the lead, to help protect the valves and the seats. Also, back in the day, we had cylinder heads that had a lot more nickel in them, and the higher the nickel content, the stronger the seats are. Then we started having the energy crisis. We started having, we don't need to go in the exact time, day, period, place, because that's not what you're here for, especially for actual dates. But back in the day, 76-ish, they started to remove um, nickel content from the cylinder heads and the blocks for several reasons. One is cost, also the weight. Uh, nickel is heavier than a non-nickel block. We don't need to get there and don't give me any things about how much stuff weighs, how much nickel weighs, as opposed to all that being said or not being said uh we started pulling nickel content out which made the the cast a lot softer and then we started to remove the lead out of our fuel so two and two combined two and two make four um you didn't come here for your math either this particular set of fe cylinder heads has never had a valve job and the seats are actually beautiful i'll Probably put a picture right in there, zoom in on the seats, and they're in great shape. Here's the valves. It's never been apart. Early model Thunderbird, real low miles. Here's the problem. I know that now it's going to be a driver, and uh, instead of adding lead additive into your fuel, they sell a little bottle of lead additive. I might even put a picture of a bottle of lead additive. Um, and you put it into your fuel, and that kind of helps it a little bit. Well, like I like to say, that's all great. If you don't mind spending money at the pump every single time for a Band-Aid, while it's in right now, it's going to be cost-effective for us to convert them over to unleaded. What am I going to do to convert them over to unleaded? Is I'm going to get rid of these vials. A, they're hammered quite a bit. Could they go through a valve job? Yes, they could. They'll be a little on the thin side. Being exhaust, you're probably going to burn a valve. Right off the bat, I'm going to go in and put a modern valve in it. When you buy the modern valves, I'm getting these from EPW, you get Ferreras, you get uh, Manly's, whatever valve that you get, they're now, it's a better valve anyway. They're generally a stainless valve. This isn't a stainless valve, but it's a factory replacement valve, and they have a better head at the bottom of the valve. All that being said, little little, little tip of the day, did you know that the valve head is not the same material as the stem if you notice that all factory valves they have a fat spot right in here that fat spot that you're seeing right in there that fat spot is the weld this is welded onto the stem so you got a hump right there because that's the weld so you have two dissimilar metals why is it that the head is welded onto the stem the reason is it's a it's a, a better material to handle the heat Okay, this is also a factory replacement, so you can see the hump is a lot less. So when we go to a performance valve, we're gonna put in a one-piece valve. The more spring pressure we have, we don't wanna drop a valve by hammering it all the time and it coming apart. Generally, all modern valves now, especially in performance, are gonna be a one-piece valve. So the valves that are made nowadays to replace these valves um, are a better quality valve and it's made for unleaded. So I'm replacing all the exhaust valves. I'm not replacing the intake valves because A, they don't have much wear on them and they're perfectly fine to go in an unleaded world. We're, we're not going to have that problem. The problem we start having is with the heat on the seat and the valve and it just, the unleaded fuel without the lead, um, the exhaust temperature is going to be up a little bit hotter, especially on the valve and the seat. You didn't come here to get specifics like how much hotter. And if you did, sorry, um, I don't know the specifics, but I do know that um, they do run a lot hotter and drier without the lead in it. So what are we going to do? We're going to put in a seat. Uh, seat looks like a ring. The seat material is a lot better and it can handle heat a lot better. So what we're going to do is we're going to machine the cylinder head and let me bring you a little closer on the cylinder head and tell you what we're going to do. Let's just go ahead and get down on it. 
So here we are. Here we have a cylinder head. As you can tell by the seats, and I may even get a little closer, they don't even have any wear on them. I shouldn't say any, but I've never seen seats this really, really preserved. Um, we could actually do a valve job, put it back in, in, into service. If this was a restoration that we didn't even want to convert to unleaded, this, this set of heads could be converted to, uh, to unleaded with just adding lead additive. But once again, we're not doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to machine the seat. A factory seat is cast in the head. Back in the day when we started getting into 76, 77, 78, 79, 80s, what they started doing is induction hardening the seat. So if you look at uh, cylinder heads that are induction hardened, you'll notice that around the exhaust seats, they're a different color. And all they're doing is essentially heating up the seat area and changing the temperament of the exhaust seat. It's still cast in the head. They removed you know, some of the nickel from the head to make up for it. They heat inducted hardened the seat making it harder and it does it did work and it lasts what is the problem with that if there is a problem with that i don't know how close you want to be or not be but it's only so deep so when you do a va job and you cut the seat you could be cutting out the heat hardness induction heating there um because it's not very deep into the seat because it's not a replacement seat it's just been heat treated so essentially think of heat treating is only so deep and depending on how much you grind on the seat or machine you could machine the hardness away what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and cut this out, machine it. I'll put it on the machine. We'll come back on. You can see me cutting the seat. I'll talk a little bit about it. You know me, I'll probably talk a lot about it. And then we're going to press in this better quality seat into the head. Now we can do as many VOD jobs as we want. And we're not going to be getting into the hardness of the seat because it's a different material. We're only doing it on the exhaust because that's the only place that it's necessary. We're going to machine it. We're going to press that in, do a valve job, and then we'll be good to go. All right, I don't know if that was too much of an explanation. I think the best thing, the way I like to do it, is put it on the machine, and then I'll talk you through it as I'm doing it. And this is how we convert a cylinder head to unleaded fuel the right way. I'm not saying that any of y'all doing it the wrong way, so maybe I shouldn't have added that. Let's go over to the machine. So when we're converting these heads for unleaded fuel, we need to change the exhaust seat. When we talk about a simple part of this video, which is installing the seat, the press fit. Some of the issues that people have dropping seats is specifically no other reason than not the right press fit. Even some manufacturers have a problem uh, figuring out what the press fit is. So I'm going to give you some insights, some tips. All right, if you follow the press fit that I use, I've never dropped a seat. That doesn't mean that you're not going to drop a seat. But if you follow the press fit that I use, I don't think that you'll drop a seat. And we'll discuss a little bit of why the differences are. All right, here we are. I got the cylinder head mounted. I don't really need to hear everybody telling me this doesn't mount on top of this rack. This should mount upside down and then you roll this over and you machine from the other side great i'm glad you all do it that way um old school i got some other little tricks up my sleeve a i don't like the cylinder head hanging on the bottom of a rack i never have and i've never done it that way that doesn't mean that y'all can't do it that way this machine is made to be used the other way there's tapers here in the bottom this isn't of how to use your seat and guide machine do it your way you do it don't leave me any comments that I would appreciate. All right, I do it on the top, set it here, it's nice and solid, and I can see what I'm doing. I'm not doing it in between these bars trying to see what I'm, what I'm doing. All right, I've already got this leveled, perfectly leveled. I can spin this puppy anywhere and it's level. Okay, so I need to get zoom in. Don't need to zoom in. My cutters have written right there on the side, the sides of the cutter is the 1687. And this is a 1687, which is going to go there. And when I measure the seat, it's oversized, which is giving me my press fit. So now I know I have the right cutter. I know I have the right seat. That seat's going to go there. This is going to go up in here. All right. My table floats. All right. But we're going to let the cutter just touch the top of the cylinder head i'm going to lock it in and then i have up here a lock and i'm going to set this here 
and you can tell when you remove this now it's only going to go in this deep here so when it, this hits that that stops there and a little tip of the day i always leave the seat sticking up just a hair and i like to top cut it my tip of the day you do whatever you want to do also we've used this to cut other stuff uh the last time so i want to go ahead and check my speed and that's way too fast we want a slow speed watch my hands And that's basically it. Okay, this one's done. I'm going to use a uh, shot vac, and then I'm going to go ahead and keep the, let the camera roll, and you can see how... This is also a floating table, but y'all already know what a floating table is. I would assume y'all know what a floating table is, so I'm not going on how to do seats. Mm -hmm. How nice is that? Yep, that's going to be the one. I'm good to go there. Let it touch, put it in a seat up here, pull the seat out, and there's my space of how far I'm going to go down. Ain't that pretty cool? Real old school cool. Here we go. you can see, we're there. We're there. Now let it just go all the way around a few times. Done. Done and done. Mm-hmm. I do like to use some fluid wells in here.
See how it's going up and down, up and down, up and down? And the reason is there's a wall right here. So as we're coming down, we're going with a bigger seat. There's a little wall right there. A little tip of the day. Reach up here to your little bar here that locks you in. See here. What I like to do is just snug it as I'm going in there. That way it's not going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. See that? And I got rid of that by just doing that. It stabilized my cutter from hopping up and down. Now I'm nice and flat and I don't need to do that anymore, but a little tip of the day, just snug your, your head. Easy now. Always a good thing. Also, I like to do that right at the end of my cut. And I will just finish the cut. So right there at the end, and this is why there's two blades on this cutter. So as it's going around, you could actually start and it just keep on repeating that same hump, repeating that same hump, look at that, repeating that same hump. So when it goes on the lower spot, I lock it. As it comes around, it cuts only the high spot. I'll let it sit there and spin around a few times as I release this tip of the day. You know me, I'm gonna have a bonus tip of the day. All right. Also, don't let your cutter start right here at the wall. You could actually break a cutter. So I started over here sideways, sideways, and just started coming down slowly on it. Here. There you go. You might be wondering how that floats so easy. More tip of the days. Where is my my foot action right here? See that? Moves around effortlessly. It just floats. Done. Done. Who am I looking at? All right, we have the seats done. You've seen how I did it on cast iron, four thousandths press fit on aluminum. 7,000 press fit. That's basically, you use that that general rule of thumb and it's never gonna bite you in the butt. Um, if you got a, a, a book, something, look through your book, do, that's fine. I'm not telling you throw away the books. Don't throw away the books. All right, we're done. Seats are installed. As for me, I'm gonna get back to work and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the, the valve job and there may be another video. Hope you've enjoyed this tip of the day and we'll see you on the next one.